get broken. Poole tied the record for touchdown receptions. Plummer tied the record for passes. Now they are trying desperately. Both seniors, of course. Plummer's pass was intended for number 88, well, Devin Kendall. That's just an indication of the way that man Second feels about his line. players. I wonder if Dick Tomey understands that. Well, I don't think he does, and I think I think Bruce Snyder is willing to to sacrifice that. Give this time is to Redmond. Redmond darts inside, gets to the two-yard line. And up to number 21, J.R. Redmond. Brought down by 48, Daniel Greer. You know, we're talking about players coming back off of uh, Arizona's defense. Top, Arizona State's offense gets three of the starting offensive line back. And of course, they lose Roque, who will be a first-round draft choice. They lose Jake Plummer. They get all the receivers with the exception of Keith Poole back. They do lose the tight end, although Kendrick Bates, who was a sophomore, came on and played very well in spots when Bush was hurt. Here's the toss intercepted. It's Kelly Malvo who could take it all away. He's the 30. He's gone. He's going to go all the way. And Dick Tony's going to like that because that's a little in your face to his opposing coach, Bruce Snyder. He got a penalty way back down the 40 yard line. Two flags. And now there's all kind of. And there's another shot as that time. One, uh, it might have been Scott Sanders. I'm not sure. It was Kevin Efon came off the bench, I believe, and threw a punch at an Arizona State player, Glenn Gable. And I think what happened on the sideline there, and the reason that player's down is that one of the Arizona State players threw a punch at him. And it was probably Gable. And what Efon did was retribution, but it's another penalty. Now, one of these penalties is going to be during the play, and the other one is going to be a dead ball. We got a player down where the first flag was thrown. It's a it's a, a University of Arizona player. The injured Arizona player is Daniel Greer. Well, this is going to be interesting. You know, it's a case of maybe Arizona State getting just a little bit greedy. The second penalty was clearly after the play was over. Now, it's the first penalty that uh, is the question. Now, the interesting thing is Daniel Greer is the injured player, and I, I'm not at all certain he was in the ball game. Oh, he was. He was the nose guard at the, on the snap. Gable on the sideline. I don't know if when we see this replay, if we're going to be able to tell exactly what happened. There was a score on the play. There was a personal foul against the defense. That'll be marked on the PAT or the kickoff. There's a dead ball personal foul on the defense. And there are two ejections. So Gable, I'm quite sure, will be one of those ejections. Now, remember, although it is after the fact here, because this game is pretty much out of reach, but Glenn Gable was playing because Pat Thompson was ejected. So they're going to be three deep at that position. And the player is still down, and that, that injury appears to be rather serious. That is Greer. And I'm not certain who the other ejected player was, although I would suspect it would be Kelvin Efon. We're coming back. We'll try to clear it all up. Greer will leave in the car. 42 to 13 is the score pending the extra point trial. Let's try to get some kind of an explanation from Andre Aldridge. Andre, you have any idea what happened? Well, well Daniel Greer, who was down on the sideline now, who was hurting there, getting ready to take off, off on the sideline. After the interception happened and the play was going down, it looked like uh, number seven, Isaiah Mustafa, with a very vicious clip. It looked like a seven. I'm not exactly sure. And the clip put him down. Uh, Dick Tomey was very upset, and he went to yell at the ASU player that made the terrible play, and that preceded the uh, Arizona guys going after the ASU guys. But it looked like a very vicious, vicious clip. I don't know if we have it on the uh, replay. I believe it was uh, Mustafa. Yeah, we don't have it on the replay because uh, we were, everybody was following the ball on the replay. And this happened probably a full 20 yards behind the ball. 
And the other question you have to ask is, why would Mustafa have been clipping him? <laughs> you know, he's got to be trying to make the tackle. Glenn Gable was involved in it, too. Now, he wears number 70. Mustafa wears number 7, so possibility there. Now, Salave has just been red hot. They're going to have to get him calmed down before this really turns ugly, uglier. And the referee's going to say something here. Let's see. There was a touchdown on the play. Both 15-yard penalties will be enforced on the kickoff. They've been doing it all night. And they are both against Arizona. Well, of course, now they said they're both against the defense. Now, this is another thing to consider. Once the ball changes possession, Arizona State becomes the defensive team. Right, and both penalties were, he, he called against the defense, which was Arizona State, but you just hate to see a, a game turn into this. These are two very well-coached teams. Very well-disciplined players, a lot of character, a lot of pride. In the meantime, it's a 42-14 to 14 game with, with this extra point. And if both penalties are assessed on the defense, that's going to give them 30 yards if they are against Arizona State. And the referees are going to really have to take hold of this game because this is getting ugly in a big hurry here. There's Gable. He no longer will be a participant. Here's the touchdown play again. It's just a little bootleg, and Plummer underthrows that. And there's the interception. And on the left side of your screen would be the clip, but we can't, we're not going to be able to see it. And about now is when players start coming off the bench. And that, unfortunately, is the only angle that we have, and, uh, which is perfectly natural because you're following the ball into the end zone. That play took place 20 yards behind where Kelly Malbo was. So we still don't know exactly what started it all. And we don't even know until they line up for the kickoff who the penalties are against. We know they're against the defense, but once the ball changes possession, as we said, that makes Arizona State the defensive team. So still 12 minutes to go in this game. You wouldn't think that that would be enough for Arizona to get back in this game. I know Dick told me trying to figure out a way to, to score 28 points in 12 minutes. They're offsetting penalties is what it amounts uh, to. One's called against Arizona because they were the defensive team when the first one was called. The other one's called against Arizona State because they were the defensive team after the fact. So, so the, one was the defense, the other one was the defense. That's correct. <laughs> Let me explain here. And now the referees, now they're trying to figure out, let's see, if I call that on the defensive team, and now I, th I think the linesman is coming in saying they're both against Arizona State. I think, if I can read lips. And, and if, in fact, they get 30 yards marched off, then you gotta, without question, I would think you'd probably try to go on side. And if that's successful, this could become a 21-point game in a big hurry. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, it was a 98-yard interception return by Kelly Malvo. Yeah, we kind of we kind of forgot all about the play there. Uh, it was a great play. I think it was Mikhail Smith. It was Mikhail Smith. Yeah, I think I, it was Mikhail Smith who made the interception and the touchdown. There he is on the sideline. Yeah, I've been calling him Kelly Malvo, and it, of course it was Mikhail Smith, number 28. Chuck Cecil with that 106-yard return in this rivalry game. Well, it'll be interesting to see if Jake Plummer comes back in the game. There was one additional foul, a personal foul on Arizona. That foul will be marked also, so there'll be a 15-yard penalty assessed on the kickoff. Kickoff will be from the 50-yard line. There were three ejections on the play. Well, that clears it up. He said Arizona, and he pointed to Arizona State. Right, so yeah, that makes sense. I assume well, he meant Arizona State. One of those Arizona schools. Campbell is the backup quarterback, just kind of stretching. I, I'm not quite sure we'll see him on this possession. 